Welcome from the Strategy Execution Duke Corporate Education Partnership. Hi, my name is Jonathan Gilbert, and we're here to look at a course in the Adaptive Strategic Execution Program. Today, we'll look at Design Thinking for Results. As I mentioned, I'm Jonathan Gilbert, and I'm the product owner for the Adaptive Strategic Execution Program, and I am the program manager for its development. Here is an agenda for our quick tour of design thinking for results. First, we'll talk a little bit about what the course is all about. Then, we'll take a look at the learning objectives, what the expected outcomes in completing the course are. Then, we'll look at how the course is organized and the content at a high level. And then finally, we'll dig into an example of actual course material that students will experience in the course, in this case, an actual exercise. The course Design Thinking for Results engages participants in a discussion about an iterative design process which bridges imagination and implementation to help organizations rapidly and incrementally address complex challenges, create value, and grow. Participants will explore the need for customer focused thinking and learn that all innovation involves product innovation. They will experience the value that innovating around processes and services can bring to an organization and discover how to implement a test and learn mentality that captures more value for the organization more quickly. The learning objectives for Design Thinking for Results. Upon completing Design Thinking for Results, participants will be able to describe how the application of a design thinking process can yield offerings that create, deliver, and capture sustainable and differentiated value in the marketplace. They will also apply a customer-centric approach to elicit the needs of the they will be able to define innovation and its multiple sources. They will also be able to apply an ideation approach to ensure broad diversity of thought and perspective into the development of a concept. They will be able to build a business model canvas to address the marketplace and matrix sides of the value chain in moving from idea to revenue capture. They will be able to apply an iterative prototyping approach to refine and then streamline concepts into offerings that are novel, desirable, defensible, doable, and profitable. They will be able to define a test and learn model for the implementation of ideas. And finally, they will be able to present offerings in a clear, concise, and compelling manner. The course organization for Design Thinking for Results. The course is structured as a workshop, and the word work should be reinforced. It is a workshop with many exercises and many case studies, all wrapped around an integral case study that the students will process through as they go through the five modules that you see here. Module one deals with the design thinking process itself. The process is known as the PSC process, which stands for perceiving, sense-making, and choreography. And the process is woven across all of the different modules within the Module two then goes into detail about 
what perceiving is reframing what you see it's actually looking at a new way of seeing module three moves into sense making which is really a way to make sense of the environment that we operate in in this case sense making is specifically about ideating and innovating in other words sense making is a new way of thinking in module four we continue the theme of sense making where we begin to build the business model based on the sense making the ideating and innovating that we did in module three and then module five moves into choreography uh, choreography really means to be able to do in a new way. and in this case module five deals with informing and improving the offering what i'd like to do now is look at an actual exercise out of the design thinking for results course and this is an exercise that helps students learn how to frame and reframe a problem. This particular exercise is called the slow elevator problem, and students are given a scenario just as you see it on the screen. The scenario here is that you have to imagine that you are the owner of an office building and your tenants are complaining that the elevator is too slow, resulting in long waiting times. Additionally, Many of the tenants are threatening to break their leases if the isn't fit. So students in the first part of this exercise are given the following work to generate a set of solutions that they will then place into the solution space. And you'll see the graphic where the problem has been framed, which in this case is the elevator is too slow. And students in the exercise are then asked to determine possible solutions and place them in the space that you see there. The second part of the exercise is to first look at what the solutions have been for the originally framed problem. In this case, we're looking at a preliminary solution and most students will have identified solutions relating to the elevator such as replacing the elevator, installing a new faster motor, or perhaps upgrading the algorithm that operates the elevator itself. These solutions fall into a cluster of solutions that share assumptions about what the problem is. In this case, that the elevator is too slow. Then students move on to the third part of the exercise. This exercise then asks the students to reframe the problem and perhaps generate new solution ideas. So in this case, the question is, what if we tried reframing the problem? Maybe the elevator isn't too slow. Maybe it's the weight that feels annoying to the riders. So the students are then asked to generate a new set of solutions based on the reframed problem that the weight is annoying. Now you'll notice that the solution space is empty because this is where students will then develop a new set of solutions for the reframed problem. Now I'm not gonna give you what the typical solutions for this reframed problem are. You'll have to take the course to find that out yourself. If you'd like to learn more, please contact us at strategyx.com slash ASEP. Thank you.